Yo, dog, I heard you like arithmetic sequences, so I added a number to the terms of a sequence. Yo, dog, I heard you like geometric sequences, so I multiplied a number by the terms of a sequence. Welcome to Unit 2, where I thought I would just make a short video comparing arithmetic and geometric sequences in series so that you can start thinking about holistically everything that you've learned about in this unit. So if we look at the basic definitions, if I give you a sequence where I give you a first term, a second term, a third term, all the way down to an nth term and so on, it is arithmetic if you take the second term minus the first term, and then the third term minus the second, the fourth term minus the third, and so on, you get a difference between the consecutive terms. So D is your common difference between the terms of a sequence, or another way of thinking about it is you take a term and you add the same number to the previous term to keep going in the sequence versus geometric has to do with the operation of multiplication. If you take the second term over the first term, the third over the second, or the fourth over the third, you end up with R, which is the common ratio between the terms of the sequence. So the basic definition, arithmetic has to do with the operation of addition, geometric has to do with the operation of multiplication. Now let's compare the nth term of a sequence. In other words, how can I make a general formula to describe a sequence? Well, if you notice that there is a common difference between the terms, it's arithmetic. And you can rewrite that in terms of the nth term as dn plus c, otherwise known as like mx plus b, where d is your common difference and c is the first term minus your common difference. The other formula that you can use is the recursive formula. What's the advantage to that? All you need is the first term and you basically plug and chug. You don't have that, that having to find c part. So Someone in class mentioned that a sub n equals dn plus c is kind of like mx plus b form, or slope-intercept form, and then a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d is kind of like point-slope. So arithmetic really has some linear application. With geometric, there's just one. You need the first term, and you multiply that by the common difference raised to the n minus 1 power. We have formulas for the sum of a finite sequence. Another way of talking about the sum of a finite sequence is the partial sum of an infinite sequence. So in both cases, you can find the sum of a finite sequence or a partial sum the long way. And this is what we did in the first lesson. This was an, an example straight from your notes. In both of these cases, we didn't use any kind of special formula. We noticed that the lower bound on example A was 1 and the upper bound was 6. So we substituted in i was equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We got the terms 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17, and then we physically had to add the terms. Now, we could use a formula for that because that is an arithmetic term, but notice in example B. Example B is not arithmetic, nor is it geometric, so the only way to compute that sum is the long way. I would have to substitute in all of the values from 0 to 8, as you've seen, and then I physically would have to add all of those terms. Now we have some shortcuts. If it's an arithmetic sequence, you can use the formula where n is the number of terms divided by 2, and you multiply that by the sum of the first term plus the last term. Geometric also has a formula. We take the first term, and we multiply that by 1 minus the common ratio raised to the nth power, all over 1 minus common ratio. Now if we want to find the sum of an infinite series, with arithmetic, there is no formula. You have to physically find the terms and add the first two terms together, then add the first three terms together, and then the first four, and the first five and six, as many as you need to determine the pattern or what number they're all hovering around. With the sum of a geometric infinite series, provided the common ratio has an absolute value that is less than one, you can use the formula S sub n equals the first term divided by one minus the common ratio. However, if the absolute value of the common ratio is more than 1, there is no finite sum to the geometric series. So hopefully this was helpful to kind of bring the last two sections together. And as you move forward, I highly encourage you to be doing a lot of these problems side by side so that when you are presented with them on the next test, that you feel comfortable knowing what formulas to use with what type of problems.